Hey, what's happening guys? Randy Rector here, back at you with another video. Today's gonna be a quick one. We're just going over the Fourscore update that now allows Fourscore to run on your Mac desktop. Now, first off, out of the gate, this is a Mac exclusive. So unfortunately, if you're running a PC, you won't be able to run this software. Additionally, this is a Big Sur exclusive. So if you haven't updated to the newest OS, which just came out yesterday, you do have to be on Big Sur to run the software. All right, so let's jump into the software here. So first and foremost, if you've purchased it in the past, you will be able to find it in your app store. So you just go in, type in Fourscore, and it will come up. You should be able to find it, but if not, apparently there is an issue. So just reach out to support and they'll help you out. All right, so we've got it downloaded. Let's go ahead and open it up. And this is basically it. So as you can see, it's very minimal. There's no borders, there's no margins. It's just the iPad app, it looks like. So yeah, this is just the iPad. Okay, cool. One thing to note is that this doesn't actually sync to your iPad. And so there's no way to uh, mark up scores on here and have that information sync over to your iPad. Really, they're two independent iPad apps, basically. It really just is the iPad app. So uh, you can use this completely independent from your iPad, which may be a good thing for some people, especially if you want to maybe, you know, practice scores in your office and then have the actual scores out on a gig with the actual markings. I don't know what use case you might want for that, but at the current time, they don't sync. Um, that's something that apparently is coming down the pipeline. I did see Fourscore tweeted about that and said that they were gonna implement that. I don't know that I have too much use for this until there's syncing, because I would love to be able to edit my scores in real time, uh, you know, manipulate the scores here and have them update on the app simultaneously. Looking over this, it looks just very similar to the app. I mean, you've got your, your scores, bookmarks, set lists, you have annotations, uh, the settings menu, which looks like it's a bit pared down perhaps. Additional settings. I'm not sure if there's anything unique in here. This looks all pretty similar to the app here at first glance. Uh, and then it does function like a computer. So command I to import scores. So I'm gonna go to my Dropbox here. So I'll bring in these four files here. Um, and then yeah, you can scroll through. Something that I'll notice is that there aren't any margins. Like I don't see where the score should actually end on the sides and down at the bottom. So to get the whole thing in, you kind of have to stretch it out and it doesn't stick to the, the margin of the paper, which I kind of wish it did. Um, one click will bring up the toolbar at the top, allowing you to do metadata, input, uh, all the same stuff, set lists, audio MIDI, annotation is up here. It's gonna be a little bit weird because you don't have your stylus or Apple Pencil. Uh, and then all the function across the top looks to be the exact same. It has layers as well, which is great. Um, but generally speaking, it's pretty much the exact same. So I'm gonna open up a score that has two pages to see. Yeah, okay, so you just press next on your keyboard and it goes. I'm wondering if it doesn't show the whole page if it... Okay, so yeah, it looks like it's doing if your page isn't scaled to show the whole piece of paper, it's looking like you press over once and it goes to the bottom of the page. Over again, we'll take you to the second page. So that's kind of useful. When you're editing in the score, if you do Command A, that's gonna bring up annotations. And there are some other features up here. So we have stamp, shapes, and draw, which are your annotations, increase, decrease size. So they are creating a bunch of keystrokes, which should actually make annotations pretty quick and easy. Full screen mode, let's see what this is all about. Okay, that's absolutely huge. I imagine that would be pretty useful with two page mode. Is that a thing? Two pages, there we go. Full screen. Okay, so this is pretty useful. This is actually huge. I have 27 inches of sheet music here, which is pretty awesome. And that's without cropping. I could crop these in as well. So what are some use cases for this application? One thing that, that came to mind right away is that some people don't have tablets. And so having the ability to bring this up on your desktop or especially on a laptop or something like that, it's gonna be pretty huge for a lot of people. I personally like it because I have the larger screen here in my office. So I bring the iPad out to gigs, but for office work, stuff like that, I can actually bring up scores now um, in Fourscore and have all the annotations and stuff like that. It's gonna be useful with this much real estate because now I can have sheet music open, Spotify open, my recording software open all at the same time. So multitasking definitely became a little bit easier. Down the road when they allow sync between devices, I think the best use for this app is gonna be sort of the administration stuff. So managing all your scores, managing your set lists, doing any sort of bulk annotations and stuff like that. 
and then allowing that to sync to your iPad so that your iPad, you can do all the handwritten stuff, whereas this is more for moving songs around in libraries and that kind of thing. Either way, I think this is a really cool starting point for Forescore to be in because now they've got it on the computer. Now it's just a matter of using the user feedback and improving upon it. Definitely a great starting point. What are the downsides of a system like this? I think the biggest one would be you can't use your Apple Pencil. So taking notes is gonna be a lot more challenging, uh, especially any sort of like, you know, scribbling, that kind of thing. Uh, I definitely love having the Apple Pencil for that. The upside though is that larger format notes, so things like um, leaving notes on your score or you know writing in lyrics, that's gonna be a lot easier with a larger keyboard, so pretty excited for that. And the other big thing is they haven't yet updated their folder management. It'd be awesome if I could make a folder on my desktop, call this scores with a capital C for some reason, and drop this into Fourscore, and it still doesn't let you do that. I know that people have been asking for a folder management system for a really long time, and I think that when they announced this, this would have been a great opportunity for them to implement this, which means you could you know, categorize all your scores into folders and drop the master folder into Fourscore and have it just everything in a row. Here's to hoping. Anyways, I hope that this was useful for you guys to see what it's like to have Fourscore on the Mac. I think it's pretty sweet. Excited to see what comes from this because I think that this is a really, really, really good starting point and I think it's only gonna grow from here. So anyways, that's about it for me today. Nice and short. I hope that this video was helpful for you and if it was, please feel free to throw a like down below. It really does help me out and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.